Well, at this point, I'll go ahead and turn it over to tonight's guest speaker, uh, Chief of Police, uh, Jim Lynch. Thank you. I'd like to thank Richard Tush and, and Fred Harwell for inviting me here tonight. It's been been a while. And you can see old friends if I can say that and, and, and not get in trouble for it because <laughs> I'm there myself. But, uh, it's good to see anybody. Um, when Fred asked me to, uh, to come and give update, um, I, I, I took an opening to uh, really just talk. Everybody's interested in crime stats and seems like have been. And, it, and just to give you some some overview of what we've been doing, some new things that have been going on, some programs that we're doing in the community, uh, you know, even with the school district now that I'm seeing you, it's good to see you. So yeah, a couple weeks ago, yeah, ref in a game. Yeah, <laughs> had y'all come out of that turn. Yeah. <laughs> they wore you out, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, no, nah, my grandson's team not very good. <laughs> oh, <yeah. Okay. laughs> but, but it's good for him to play. Yeah. Um, about crime stats. Uh, 2013, we kind of uh, had a mixed bag. Oh, you know what? I'm, I've got. I'm going to pass these out because you guys can read them if you want to. I uh, I try to do this so that I, I've got a 14 font on here, so I should be able to read it without glasses <laughs> and, and hold them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's important. Tell me, Jim. That's important. I, I, <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I'm with you. Um, the, the, 20, the 2012 and 13 sta the stats were almost identical. Um, there was a large decrease in violent crimes, murder, rape, and robbery, uh, which is a, a combined decrease of 28 percent. However, aggravated assaults took a large jump to 35 percent. Is that mostly families? Uh, aggravated assault, you know, husband uh, wives. Uh, I mean, it, it's mostly for domestic okay. assaults, and, but uh, the other large portion was uh, people that knew each other, friends, neighbors, whatever. Uh, so that was that was a big increase. Uh, burglaries had a decrease. Uh, there's 32 fewer burglaries from 2012. Um, and, and auto thefts was almost identical to 2013. We took a big bump in December in auto thefts because it got cold. People left their cars running, went back inside, um, and the cars were stolen. Um, statistically, uh, I believe 2013, uh, and, and all the stats are not in because we're so close to December, so not everything is in. I think we've recovered over half the cars that were stolen. Um, So it, it, it probably would have had the stats I have from our customer for crime analysis. We probably would have had about a 10% decrease, except for the big bump in December. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of, of the uh, part, uh, part one crimes, 425 part one crimes, and they're listed there murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, large, uh, larceny, and auto theft, and arson. Of those crimes, there was, four, there was 1,425 of those types of crime in 2013, and there was 1,421 in 2012, so then not uh, significant. Um, and, and just another stat, that the crime per thousand people in 2012, it was uh, 50 crimes per thousand, and then, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, in 2012, and then 48 per thousand in 2013. So due to the increase of population, there's just a slight decrease in, in that stat area. Um, one of the things that uh, always, you know, you, everybody asks you about Walmart and how many uh, thefts we have there. We, we have a lot. 15% um, of all the crime, there's an increase of 5% over 2012 of, of the same period between 2011 and, and 2012. It actually went up 21% in, in that time period. But 15% of all crime reported in Raytown for 2013 occurred at Walmart. 80% all those crimes or for shoplifting. Um, there's an additional 9% for the ID theft, fraud, and forgery. Um, not, I'm not trying to say Walmart's not, not a safe place to go. <laughs> One half of a percent of, of all the crime or violent crimes there 
Walmart's a big store. Uh, sure. A lot of people go there. Um, a lot, of, a lot of you know target rich environment, auto theft stuff like that. So they, you know, in in, in fairness to comparing them, when they were sixty seven in Blue Ridge, who knows really their their security system that they have is so sophisticated in the Walmart we have now. Uh, they are catching a lot more there. Uh, the uh, officers work there probably, I don't know, 18 to 20 hours a day off duty. And so uh, it's, it's kind of a target rich environment for people. Anytime you have a large crowd, uh, and it's a 24 hour a day operation. One of the good things with public safety sales tax did was gave me a crime analyst. We were, we wanted a crime analyst, wanted a crime analyst, but never could afford it. And he's worth his weight in gold. He's, he's done a great job. Um, he has been able to identify crimes, uh, crime patterns, um, and work with other agencies. So you know, we have co we have computers in the car now. But another good thing, you know, the capital and the public safety sales taxes has bought to us. Uh, you know, the computers in the cars so they get up to date information. Actually, when the dispatchers log in a, a call, she's typing in, she's getting a call, and that is automatically transferred committed to the uh, officer's laptop in the car, or, or yeah, laptop in the car. So um, we got a little more sophisticated over trying to keep up with the criminals over the last few years, and it's it, our crime analyst has done a great job. You know, before you had a district, you know, you stayed in it, it was like north of 63rd, 63rd to 50 highway and, and south, but with the crime analyst, the better, better way to do policing is where the, where the events are occurring and give the data to the officers daily, um, up to date by the minute even. Um, some, a Walmart Raytown has a crime there and there's a series of them. They have the information and they get a car description and um, so, so it's a better system that we have. So. Um, we also have a program called Res Online which uh, allows people to to log in and see in their neighborhood if they want to see what type of crime, the date and time the crime happened. Um, typically we don't uh, give the exact address to protect the rights of you know those that, that have been victimized. But you can also um, hook up to a, you know hook it up to an iPhone or Android and get alerts when there's a crime happening or that's happened. <clears throat> That's, that's it, uh, I've got my crime stats, but if somebody wants to ask me a question, I'll be glad to try to answer. Yes? The data that's on the uh, ra raids online is more detailed and better than the police slaughter uh, PDFs that are sent out. Is there any way to upgrade the Blotters that are sent to the news agency, so they're as good as the one that's online. Um, you know, really, the, the stuff that we put out there, I don't, I don't know about an update. You can call me and ask me. I mean, we have two different systems. You get the res online and the blotters. Just to, you're talking about the blotter or the, yeah, the, the block? The block. No, the blotter. The blotter that gets emailed out every day that has a 24-hour worth of activity. I've noticed that the res online is more detailed uh, than the blotter. Well, you get your answer then. You know, do the res online. Well, yeah. <laughs> one, one I can cut and paste, and the other <laughs> takes a lot more effort to get to the public. Call me. See if we can help you. How's that? Sounds good. Uh, all right. Um, hey, again, you know, keeping up with the news, like I say, the the Twitter and the Facebook thing, we communicate with the public now, we post tweet-alongs. Corporal Harper has done some of those things up to date, and they'll send them questions, they'll an answer, and we found that's a pretty good tool, and people make comments on that. Um, uh, yeah, I looked at that before it came, it's a, it's a great tool to have for people, and it seemed to be very popular to communicate. Um, we just I just signed a memorandum of understanding with Juvenile Court for Youth Court, uh, in, in conjunction with the juvenile court, we uh, just started our uh, youth court program back in Raytown. Detective Brett Clear is in charge of that, and um, it's where we participate with the uh, judicial system by trying cases in a peer uh, setting, and um, they're, they're judged by the peers, and they don't have they are cases which don't rise to the level of being prosecuted formally in court. And, um, and 
produces a positive pure pressure. Um, one of the other things we've done in the last couple of years is drug take back pro uh, program. Um, we've had, I, think, I believe, four dates. We usually do it in the spring and the fall where people can bring their prescription drugs to designated locations instead of, uh, in, um, been guilty of this in the past, throwing your old prescription drugs in the toilet or in the trash or whatever. There's just a better way to do it and protect the environment. And um, been a very successful program. You know, people can bring drug, their prescription drugs, and not their drug, prescription drugs, to these locations, and uh, you know, I told it honestly, and, and be able to uh, dispose of those. Also, uh, Richard is on the water board in District Two, and with their help, Patters help, we uh, got a drug uh, take box. It's basically a mailbox that's in a lobby of our police department in 24-7. It has to be monitored uh, by the program standards. So it is now, um, again, thanks to the Water District, they paid for the mailbox, and it's people can do it 24-7 and bring the prescription drugs and, and leave it in there. Um, the National Night Out was pretty successful last year. It was at Carnegie Park the year before we had it First Baptist. Um, and many of them were running out of uh, the space in Raytown to hold an event that big, but Kennedy Park seemed to work pretty well last year, and it gives us a night to showcase the uh, fire department, police, public works, EMS, along with cooperation of several other entities in Raytown that are there and uh, participate. It's a good night to get together and, and meet people and see what other programs and things are going on in Raytown. Um, talk about Facebook. Nixle. I guess it best Nixle stuff up. Um, Nixle is another way that we have to communicate with uh, citizens. You can um, sign up for it. It's, it's free. You can get email uh, or uh, text message alerts. If there's, uh, say, like a, a water main break and it's frozen and the road's closed, uh, we might have um, a police incident that's going on. And you, like I said, if you're going to phone, you're on your way home, you can divert yourself around that that problem. And uh, so, so there's uh, information in here on you know, how to sign up for Nixle. But that, it's pretty, it's a pretty good program. Sometimes it can be pesky, but you know you get too many of them. But I think it's a real uh, good tool to have. Um, it seems like a lot of people are signing signing up for that. Uh, just a couple of other things we're doing. We're, we're, we have initiated a, a volunteer and police uh, service. It's VIPS program, and basically civilians are, are come in, and um, we uh, secretarial help, um, help like with national get out. Um, we made uh, cha chaplains. We have some chaplains. Um, we have interpreters that are involved. Um, I know we don't have everything that's listed on this brochure, and I only have two brochures. Neighborhood Watch is another, is another one. Uh, the HERE program, which is a health emergency assistance registry, and um, basically sign up for this program if you're a resident of Raytown, and it provides uh, assistance if you need uh, electrical powered uh, medical devices. Um, and electricity to power those. We check on residents usually in the extreme cold weather in the winter, you know, power lines, whatever, power outages, and extreme heat in the summer. And we have, I'm, I'm going to say we have over 100 people on this now from the last time I asked, so pretty pretty successful program. Uh, there's a brochure on the drug take back program, and another, we uh, kind of reinstituted our postal carrier alert. Um, you sign up for this. You, the red sticker on the inside of your mailbox, postal uh, carrier delivers your mail, and there's two or three days of mail. They alert the police department to you know, go, go check on you. So we're working in cooperation with the postal service on that. And then uh, another uh, program in the last couple of years is Project Lifesaver, and it's for um, Alzheimer and related disorders, uh, something like Down syndrome or autism, that might wander away, and they have a bracelet on our trans transmitter, and then um, you know we have a receiver to, to track them, and they have a pretty good response on on, on those, and uh, pretty successful. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, he got the City Lake Town newsletter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pass them out if you want them. <clears throat> Great. I'm just going to talk a little bit about. Uh, here's a thing, some stuff too. I need to test that out. I think there's those kind of go together. Pick up. This looks like something Greg might have printed. <laughs> no, it looks too nice. <laughs> it's You've got to go see the koala. It's a joke, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this Thank looks buddy. like it could have been done by a human shop. <laughs> uh, I don't see the button. <laughs> Maybe it's done in Lee's song. Um, it's a nice little printer out there. Yeah, it's a union printer out there in Lee's song. Um, <laughs> you know, just, just to mention a couple things about, you know, uh, People were passing out before we talked about the, the, the charter. The charter. Um, we talked about our meeting. Yeah. And I can hear your comments on that, sir. Good. comment. I'm just going to say the, char the charter will uh, be on the ballot April 1st. The uh, school district has a, you know, a renewal bond issue on. And then the city of Raytown also has um, the capital sales tax, which is a half cent sales tax. And the transportation sales tax is a three ace uh, cent sales tax. And I'm, I'm not going to talk about everything that it does, but it's on page four um, what the money goes to. And this is a renewal, it is not a uh, it's not news tax, new tax, um, it's, it's something really for our survival. Um, I buy police cars, I mean, for me, ambulances, dump trucks, whatever. Um, and then the transportation side, you know, pay the roads and the Metroplex and, and, and stuff like that that that's listed on on page four. Um, you know, it's uh, t times are tough and without the sales tax, if we we would perish uh, for sure. It is uh, it's, it's it's been a lifesaver for really over the last few years with the. Revenue down and housing taxes down. And right. Like it, it's it's been a, a good plus for us. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna just open it to questions for a minute. Quit talking. Except for Mike, you can't ask me anything. You had yours. I got a quick question. Yeah. Sure. How often do you guys call to the schools? Well, often we call the schools. You know, I would probably have to get that for you. I don't. I don't know how often um, for different things. You know, you might. You know, if, if, if there's an assault or if something happened last night at home, and if, you know, a teacher finds out about it, you might call us. Um, I, I am on the school safety. You know. Right, yeah, both um, and uh, I know they canceled a meeting Monday, but yeah. that, I think what the school district has done for, to protect the kids and uh, with, working with us in cooperation with events that go on and the training, um, we have a real safe school yeah. district. Um, Dr. Mara Plain Travis Oaks are very proactive in that area and, um, and, and really honing in on the, the safety, the cameras we worked in cooperation with the school district with Janie Pyle and we got a, uh, a grant through the federal government and I'm thinking it was 150000 a couple of years ago and it was a matching grant for you know, it provided a lot of cameras and that surveillance stuff and that kind of thing key cards probably I don't know what all it went to but so that that was a great grant that, that uh, she put together and I uh, wish we could do more of those but the federal dollar shrinking also uh, it's about jobs, isn't it? I mean, if you had a job, you'd have tax revenue. So we need jobs. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Well, no, I, I noticed the uh, ISS and the OSS was going down some. Is that right? Yeah. And so I asked that question to uh, Dr. Mark and him mm -hmm. uh, Monday night. You know, how often do we call the police to sue? Uh -huh. yeah, he probably said about you know, three to five times over the last year. So, right. Yes. Yeah, so. Right, and then we did pass a new ordinance and, and trying to assist the school district. You know, kids are out of school and right. try to you know find out okay what you know why, and so we work in, you know with them on that. Steve Sheldon kind of um, brought that to the forefront with the school, with the city, and that you know, urgency. So yeah, but I, I don't I don't know that we've really ever ever really used it, but it's a tool like anything. So. Can 
Yes, ma'am. This probably isn't your department, but you may know why. Um, when <coughs> a person is sent to, has been told that they have to do a community service, and it is from the judge in the city of Brayton, <coughs> if they have any felonies against them, they can only go one place, and that's in Kansas City, and it's on. It's only during the week. It's not the weekend, so it's hard for them to do that community service if they don't um, have some place on the weekend where they can go. Uh -huh. So, what can we as right now do to help those people out? Because I have some. The ones that have felons, that they're, they're convicted felons. Yeah, the only place they can currently go now is the Kansas City Parks Department during the week. Yeah, and that's, that's uh, I don't know if I have an easy answer because you, you the program uh, has to be, you know, there has to be a budget for and there has to be somebody that uh, is there and monitoring it. And, well, they also and, have to have a job and they can't have a job when they have to take off every day for community <coughs> service. So, it, right. you know, there needs to be... There are some programs through like probation and parole and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but you're, you're right, it's at that state level. It's, it's nothing... Um, the city doesn't. Have, the city do, does not have a program like that. And I don't know many cities that do, be, because uh, they're mostly guided by the state. Okay. Yeah. I know we used to have kids from court or whatever, Washington police cars or whatever, but uh, it wasn't probably the level you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not sure how it works with Raytown's ordinances in courts, but I know um, at some levels, in some jurisdictions, they'll allow the community service to be done with like a uh, 501c3, like any registered tax exempt charity. Mm -hmm. um, not if you got a felony. Not if you got a felony. Yeah, um, that's tough. I, you know, I, I think Al Brown's uh, on occasion had a couple kids in there, but it's, again, it's not at the level that Sandy's talking about. They're there all the time. <laughs> 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 I made my son go there. <laughs> no, that's just to yeah. see. That's right. <laughs> just to, you know, be involved. Yeah. Yeah. But, How are the new SUVs with that? Um, you know, we were talking about that last night. We're, we're getting ready to go to the council Tuesday and, and get three more. They definitely get around in the snow. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than anything. Then Crown Vans, Dodges, whatever you buy. Yeah. They well, they're all wheel drive. Are they good chase vehicles or not? <laughs> Say that again. Are they good chase vehicles or not? Um, Probably not. You know, we have a pretty good chase policy. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> and we're restricted. Chase policy. I, uh, I haven't driven one. Independence is having a problem, you know. Um, uh, I got to count on independence. Okay. Theirs is a little bit. Everybody's <laughs> a little bit different, you know. And, but, In other words, um, you have any limit as to the speed you would be. We have a very. We have a very, very good careful. policy. Okay. We have a very good policy. Um, Probably didn't want to open that can of worms. No, no, sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I mean, you know, uh, some agencies allow you to chase, some, some don't. Some let you, you know, drive until the wheels fall off. We don't. We do not. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's an individual thing still, an individual uh, chief or organization. Um, they are, you know, you can be like, you know, Grandview uh, when they went across state lines years ago and, and they don't, they, they do not chase anybody. Um, and, and you know, for some reason, that's not a good thing. Because some some people may be caught, but you don't want to, you know, do like independence. And, and uh, of course, they pulled off the chase, and that somebody was killed for that. And that that's that's a bad thing. Um, and and just for traffic, it sounds like you know. But um, it's a good thing that they they, they stopped when they did. Um, Are they supposed but to run to answer your, or to, to answer your question though. I think they're good vehicles. You know, some of the stuff we're doing with them, Fred. Um, you know, they want equip, equipment change around. You know, but you get different people on it, and it might be okay for this person. The next guy gets in there, Dale yeah, gets in, it, and it's like, okay, it's okay. So um, I quit trading the colors out because no matter what color I picked out, nobody likes us. Okay, you guys do it. <laughs> I still had a hard time getting used to seeing them on the street. You know? They're different. different. They're very different. Uh, Kansas all the jurisdictions, you know, you know whether it be right. here yeah, at least right. Summer. Right. They're, they're not that much more. They're a little bit more. But for what I think you get out of them, and, and, and in particular the last two years with the snow, 
Um, yeah. We weren't going anywhere, and no agency was that had you know, cars. So they, they'd be pretty good. They're roomier. Um, they're six cylinders, so in, in essence, they should be a little bit, uh, you know, more gas fuel efficient. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so, you know, when when we're out there, we're running twenty, you know, twenty four seven. They very rarely turn them off, and so. But it sounds like they're good. We're getting ready to order three more. To, or go to the board anyway if they throw that Tuesday. Yeah, about get some same more. space in the back as the trunks of the cars. I think it's just For proportioned better. You know, I think they they like in the way. Uh, everything fits in there and stuff a lot better than, than the, uh, the cars. So, yeah, I think it's here for it's here to stay for a while until they do something different, you know. But they've been a, they've been a very good car for us. Yeah. Yes. I noticed that some of the agencies are are using the Ford Taurus. Have you had any Tauruses? We have two detective cars okay. that, that have are, and they're all well drive. They they really like them, mm -hmm. but they're not. Um, They're not on the streets. They're uh, they're replaced. We have a vehicle replacement program, and you know it, it's not always just mileage. It might be that well, this car's always in the shop, but you know, or it's a lineman or whatever. Right? Let's it's costing us too much money. So sometimes when you see you know that we you know get rid of cars uh, one season other, it's just not mileage. Sometimes it's uh, that they've sat. There's engine idling time. They take everything into consideration. But, Mike. Yeah, I missed. What the new model and brand is? It's a, it's a Ford Police Interceptor, but it's the utility. So is it more like the SUV? Or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Utility like SUV. Explorer, it's an explorer. Yeah, it is an Explorer body. Explorer. Yes, it is. Body. Mm -hmm. It is. That's the one that I've seen. Yep. So I'm, I'm safe with Miami. Yeah, we have Miami. two. <laughs> like we'll just wait till you get back home. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and actually, um, you know, uh, Dick Smith Ford uh, got the, the, through the bidding process. Through uh, anyway, they they've got the bid on the show. Just like we're on, you know, right here in right town. So, are we are we are we still going to the state, or are we actually going to use the local dealers again, or actually the local dealers to bid? You know, when I was there, right, right. they would Mr. Winston, you know, <clears throat> wouldn't allow anybody any local dealers to bid. If you weren't a state bid, you didn't get it. You know. Right. Which I think is wrong, you know, I'd like mm -hmm. to see Dick Smith get it. Right, and you know, um, myself and uh, Major Bowman went and talked with Mark and told him how to, you know, hey, this is how you yeah, get involved yeah, in the yeah. cooperative bidding process and stuff. And last year and this year we bought cars from him. And there may be even another year in between there that I'm not thinking that we bought the cars. I think there was, we bought some, I think yeah, it might be three years. we got left here. What's that? They're the only new car dealership we got left here. Right. Right, but there is there is that bidding product. You have to follow all that, you know, whatever. And and it's but got cars the cars were bid. coming from everywhere. They were coming from Columbia and all over right. the place. I, I, you know, I, th I think Jerry, you know, from when you, when you were in, I mean, and you know, fast forward, you know, we, hopefully we've, we've learned something over the years. And before it was like, okay, you got this pot of money, go buy cars, and and now we have the vehicle replacement program. So we're you know, you buy two or three. You know, this or that, or two or three computers this year, and try to, you know, do this so you you don't panic buy and you have to spend yeah. you know, a million dollars. Yeah, but they don't all come out at yeah. once. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then you buy them, and then you know something's outdated next year or whatever. You know, so yeah. you know you can always kind of uh, revamp, sure. and revamp. But yeah, I think we're doing the city doing better there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a trend or anything going on here with kids and the drugs? You know, there was a thing in the paper this morning about a gal selling drugs to a 14-year-old and it killed him. It was a, I don't know, it was like, like a homemade, homemade drug or homemade something. Synthetic. Synthetic. Homemade synthetic. synthetic packaged drugs that they apparently go out and sell here. And they kept calling it LSD, which didn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's and she said talking. she didn't need to warn him because if he was... You know, buying drugs, you ought to know. I mean, I guess it's really potent and it really is mm -hmm. lethal. She wouldn't even use it herself, but she exactly. push it. I, I think I caught part of that either last night or this morning. I don't have the whole story, but I mean, as far as synthetic drugs um, or or alcohol, for that matter, with kids, yeah, well, that was uh, be which is a, which is a is a big one, and uh, um, we have. Um, had several arrests in Raytown at our, I'm going to say, uh, different places, different businesses that sell 
the stuff. We we do have um, a couple officers that uh, work special investigations, and um, we, we didn't target anybody. We just went around and you know we had you know kids going or whatever they went in and uh, but there's a large amount of synthetic type and it's packaged different and everything and I, I don't know if I can stand here and tell you I understand it all because you walk in and you see something and it's like okay what is that and uh, you know it's just a new package more you know it's a uh, it's ever evolving like, like you're saying so it's like the bath, or, there was something salt was it, didn't they call it bath salt they call it bath salt yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it Pottery. wasn't bath salt right right it's a synthetic and they just for, typically redoing it hiding it, I guess, trying to cover it. Mm -hmm. the, you know, it was, um, you know, when I said, all right, guys, go get them, you know, I, said, I want you to specifically work this. This is what I'm, I'm here as a parent, you know. Sure, I got a kid who just graduated from right down south, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, just hearing stuff and places that were um, selling to minors, uh, alcohol, um, it, it, it was you know, kind of warming in places in right down there were selling. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we keep but keep working on that. <laughs> you know. So, do you go undercover when you check these out? I mean, is that that type of an operation? Yeah, we, we don't try to be. You know, we don't try to be tricky and send you know a, a twenty uh, year old with a, a, you know twenty years old and eleven months. As a matter of fact, what I said was uh, just send a kid in there with a twenty thirteen graduating class of. Of, of Raytown South and see if they sell to them, you know, and it, it didn't, and I'm not saying anything about the kids in South, I'm just saying, but we weren't trying to trick anybody. And, and of course you have store owners and then you have well, yeah. kids or people that work guy. for them and, yeah. you know, so it's not always, the you know, the storm has knowledge of what's going on in our people and, you know, and, and uh, you know, we produce a lot of court cases for that. And we just, you know, keep really working problem out. that smoke, smoke shop, I guess it is? There at 63rd at Blue Ridge, have you had any problems there? Um, yeah, there's been some issues there. Uh, you know, some are external. Okay. You know, they're not necessarily inside there. Okay. But as far as I know, they're pretty, pretty good store there. What about the, used to be Woodall, I don't know what they call themselves now. They're on the highway in the middle. Um, uh, you know, like I said, there's probably been some issues there. Um, inside now and um, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. In other words, nothing's changed. <laughs> You're good at hiding your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the, you know, there's some court cases maybe pending and stuff, so I don't want you know, to say too much on it. Teenage parties. Is that a big problem here in Raytown? Or? I, I don't know if it's a big problem. Here's what we do with, uh, we we have our dispatchers that are obviously 24-7, and then there's people in booking. And uh, we target uh, anybody that, uh, you know, on, I don't know, Facebook or whatever, if somebody's having a party and it says right now, we're, we're looking at that constantly, 24-7. And um, they had a party uh, on 60 Balnicks, and uh, we saw the kids and, oh, free beer. We're, oh, we're going to have a crowd there tonight. You know, it's all over the place. And there was a pretty, there was a pretty big crowd there, and there was actually shots fired in the parking lot that night. But we were in and out, and uh, you can't attribute it to anybody because it was out of a car. You know, they get, they're mobile; they get in a car, and and they're gone. Um, anyway, that's a, that's, a, that's a big problem with shots fired too. Is that everybody's mobile, and um, you get shots fired calls, and Fred, you probably when you're out there working, it's like. They're gone. You don't. You don't know where they're. You don't know where they're at. Find witnesses because like, they're gone as fast right. as the rest of them. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. speaking of that, the mobile, because of everybody having their mobile phones now, the texting and all that. And you're. Uh, we had an incident in the neighborhood recently. Your officers were awesome, but literally at 11:30 at night, I've never seen anything like this before. There were probably 50 to 100 cars all at once that showed up. Within two minutes of your officers being called, they were there and they stayed in the area and moved them on. But I, I mean, it's like the kids, it reminded me of cockroaches. They were just <laughs> dying, <laughs> literally out of the floor. And I've never seen anything like that. I mean, that fast, that many. Yeah, it's 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 the social media, like we're saying. We we try to we try to keep up with everybody too. And it's but they'll, they'll they'll get something out of the party here or whatever. Yeah, we'll have a lot of a lot of kids show up, and we and, you know we, we try to stay out of that. 
doesn't seem to be as many as there was years ago. It seems like the Raytown kids go outside of Raytown more than they used to. Yeah. Well, you know, they were having parties or hosting them wherever, and they were, they were going a quick trip on 63rd Street. And actually, unfortunately, I had to shut down at night for a while because, it, it, you know, they come in and, you know, I was watching kind of steal stuff. I don't know where it was, but it was just the national news. But some police departments, I guess, if you have the extra resources, they had a room, and an officer would monitor the social chatter, like on Twitter and Facebook, and they look for these certain words, like, mm -hmm. I forget what they call the parties, right, but, you know, flash mob or whatever, and they'd see it trending, and so the officers would know, oh, right. there's a party about to go off in yeah. 10 minutes, and so-and-so, cool. so, they'd send officers there, and, you know, break it up before it's <laughs> like Before it gets so, going. You know. Right, and that's what we do with when yeah. they're, they're keying in on Facebook and the stuff with just Raytown, and so, we, you know, like I said, we'll... Uh, as we can, dispatchers or the people that are booking, because that's, they're there 24-7, yeah. um, we'll, we'll look at that ourselves. So, so. so you have officers actually working on that? Um, not officers, dispatchers, dispatchers. Or booking people. And sometimes officers too, sure. But they're searching for that. <laughs> they're, they're there watching for it, right, yep. popping up or whatever. Okay. Yep, on our Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Got modern. <laughs> it's changed. It did change a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, we're better than than uh, what we used to be. But it's you know, you still got to keep up with some of the kids. But they'll figure we'll figure out something else. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been any leads or any breakthrough on? I can't think of his first name. I keep wanting to call him Bob Stone. His last it's Harry. Stone. Harry Stone. Harry Stone. Um, there's nothing significant. Um, I noticed they've got a big billboard on the highway. Right. Well, we're still investigating that. We're investigating. We still, we pro proactively working that. We have a detective assigned to that case in particular. And, uh, yeah, this is it. Every sad. Who's a drive by shooting? He's just out of jogging. Sunday morning, right? Yeah, he's driving, I think. Um, what was Mother's Day? Uh, mm -hmm. two million, a year and a half ago, I think. No, two years, a year and a half, anyway. Yeah, they're just jogging. Did they ever find out what was going on between those two cars up at Gregory and yeah. where they where they shot a bunch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we got to figure it figured out, but we're not having very much uh, cooperation from even the, the victims. <coughs> really? Yeah, one of them second incident. And so it wasn't just two a months. random shooting. Somebody driving down the road. Eh, this gang is initiation. Uh, don't don't those. believe so. No. Young people, young adults. Um, I don't know their ages. No. It was, you know, we don't we don't have the other half of the equation. We only have the, the, the couple that were actually shot. There's two people shot. No. And then the other question I have is. When there's damage done to property and the police catch the people and they are a minor, I understand you can't release that information back to the, to the property owner. But can't the property owner go lay pressure on the city prosecutor if you want restitution? For a minor? Yeah. Um, the city prosecutor wouldn't be involved in a, in a minor. They only, he only prosecutes adult cases, 17. So and above. Would that go to the county room? Yeah, it would. Now, of course, you'd have to have a case. We'd, we'd have to have, be working an active case that went to the county or, of course, the youth court uh, thing now that's been started. Are you talking about the fire hydrant? I hop. <laughs> the thing is, we don't. You know, everybody, there's a rumor out there that we know who did it. It, it was, uh, and I teased Pat because he said, well, you know, I'll get these kids, you know, for the fire, and they go, Pat, they didn't pay their bill at IHOP, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. you know, like you're saying, uh, we, we do not know who stole it. It was a stolen car, and we did not arrest anybody. Okay, so, so yeah, there's the nothing was provided to the water board members. Yes, yeah, and I actually talked to Pat uh, probably a couple days, but it might have been Monday, I don't know, and said, hey, we, we don't have any leads. We, we did investigate it, there's nothing. You know, in that particular case, unfortunately, but it was, it was a stolen car. You can't go back on the owner of the car. They, you know, it was stolen. They didn't allow it, so it happened. Um, speaking of stolen cars, you mentioned that about half the stolen cars in the last year uh, you recovered. 
Uh, how many of the bad guys did you recover? Um, <laughs> they didn't come in the car. You mean, yeah, I probably not. You know, if I had a guess, probably a lot less. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking 50% is not oh, great. Yeah. Pretty good. Recovery, the like, where's the other 50%? You know? What's the percentage that stay, the cars that stay in recount? Um, most of them get found outside. Percentage? You know, there's no rhyme or reason to somebody stealing a car. It's like the ones in, in December that people went out and started their car. Mm -hmm. Well, how'd that guy have to go down the street and just hop in a car? You know, where'd he come from? You know, was he next door? Or where was it? And then he might go down a block or two and there's another stolen car down there. And, you know, kind of put two of them together. But it doesn't always happen that way either. Um, well, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason for some of it, you know, really. And, and you can't connect the dots always. No, but I mean, the cars recovered, are most of them recovered outside of Ray Pan? Mm -hmm. Or I would you know, say probably goes joyriding or something. They usually yeah. find they find them far away or the next city. Uh, or you might road. find them around the block. I mean, there's nothing really specific. They might be in Kansas City in the summer. They may yeah, steal another one do. there. Um, you know, the the, the carjacking. Uh, the gentleman that robbed Burger King at like eight in the morning about uh, let me say two months ago, roughly. He had carjacked a Kansas City officer's wife the night before at gunpoint, and then he robbed Burger King, and then um, I actually, um, it was the SWAT training day that day, and had uh, one of the detectives come in to work. He had a, he had a car and listened to the radio traffic, and he was able to, to apprehend uh, the suspect that day. I mean, the guy pulled a gun at him, and you know, he shot him, he, and he walked out of the hospital a week later. So it's an active case that we have. And, He's a convicted bank robber, so you know you never, you never know. I, you know, I don't know. You know if you could predict it, we could, we could do a lot better. But you never know what people are going to do. Our time's going from banks to Burger King. <laughs> he got hungry. Yeah, I don't know if he got a burger or not. <laughs> 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 burger and fries and bank, please. Cash in the drawer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Cash on the side. <laughs> I appreciate you inviting me. If there's anything else, or you can get a hold of me. And it's, it's, it's fun being here. Pretty good to see you.